Information on Iran and North Korea is pretty hard to come by, and there's a reason for that. Both of these countries were born out of revolution and war. They insist on their national sovereignty, their economic, cultural, and military independence. And that culminates into both of them being a threat to the American grand strategy, its global imperialism, and the imposed hegemonic order of Bretton Woods. But these countries are much more than just strategic partners in light of an American threat. The Islamic Republic and the People's Democratic Republic of Korea, they genuinely like each other. What are the origins of this strange relationship, and how does it endure? This vlog is about how Iran and North Korea became the best of friends in an age of imperialism. I'm Arash, and this is episode 6 of Iran Military Vlog. Iran's contact with the Korean Peninsula stretches back to ancient antiquity. Trade and business along the Silk Route were prevalent at a time when Iran's borders stretched well into the western provinces of China. In the 9th century, Iranian historian Khorda was one of the first to document the Silla Kingdom, today's North and South Korea, and this historical recording serves as an important diplomatic building block. But before Iran could ever ink diplomacy with the North Koreans, the South had already attended the function. During the 1950s, the Iranian monarchy threw its unequivocal support behind the South during the Korean War, and Tan Wan Lee was the first South Korean foreign minister to visit Iran in 1966. The 1960s and 70s saw a surge of trade balances and political support between Iran and the South, and all of this was of course overseen by a transatlantic global directive. Ultimately, all of what the U.S. coordinated came to an end in 1979. Until the early 1980s, Iran was one of three main oil exporting countries to South Korea. But when Iranian students stormed the American embassy in Tehran and figured it was used as the CIA's main headquarters, reports began emerging that the South Koreans were involved. The revolutionary government almost immediately downgraded its relations, and in turn, South Korea began looking towards Iraq and the Persian Gulf monarchies. From that point on, Iran approached Pyongyang for support in exchange for oil. North Korea could also serve as a hub for the communist bloc counterweighing American hegemony. The rise of a revolutionary Islamic Republic baffled the North Koreans, and as expected, they seized the opportunity. Prior to this, the DPRK had been looking to entrench itself in Iran's region, but couldn't get beyond a few Soviet-aligned countries like Iraq and Egypt. For both countries, there was little time to get acquainted. A year after the Islamic Revolution, Saddam Hussein's Iraq, supported by the United States and Great Britain, invaded Iran. The invasion pitted much of the capitalist world against the Islamic Republic. It was exactly what the DPRK was looking for to solidify and secure its interests. Almost overnight, North Korea became Tehran's main military supplier. And when it came to purchasing oil, the Koreans were notorious for bringing up trade deficits. And they were generally much more successful in striking a good deal with Iran than with other countries. It wasn't just military exchanges based on material gains that were going on. Part of North Korea's soft power strategy was its willingness to invest in cultural exchanges, without being obsessed about how to make money from every encounter. Dozens of cultural agreements were signed during the 1970s. And when Muammar Gaddafi's Libya refused to support Iran during the invasion in the 1980s, Iranian commanders visited Pyongyang hoping to find alternatives. It was North Korea that supplied defense capabilities and missiles that could reach the Iraqi capital. In 1989, the leader of the Islamic Revolution of Iran visited Pyongyang and said this, امپریالیسم آمریکا در کنار دولت و ملت قهرمان کره هستیم و شما می توانید و شما می توانید روی این حمایت حساب نمایید همچنین ما از حمایت های دولت جمهوری خلق کره و رهبری عالی قدر آن از ملت قهرمان ایران و دولت جمهوری اسلامی در طول سالهای پس از انقلاب 
و در طول مدت تجاوز بر علیه ما جدا تشکر می نمید. The commonalities of Iran and North Korea's political culture couldn't be more vivid. Both countries offered uncompromising resistance against the powers that have tried to harm them. Both are revolutionary governments emerging out of a political movement. The revolutionaries who fought the domestic order turned the prevailing system around. Both countries have charismatic and visionary leaders. They've enshrined revolutionary principles in their regulatory and power structures. And to this day, both countries uphold their revolutionary ideals consistently. Iran and North Korea's relationship works, not just because it was born out of the dysfunctional hegemonic order, but because both find continuity in their ancient and bilateral heritage. <laughs>